content. And we just want to make sure that uh, it's very efficient and, and we want to streamline all the information to you because this is very, very important information. Um, so for those of you, uh, if you want to follow through with your smartphone, you could go ahead and get all the information by texting FACCOC to 90407. And you could also open your web browser and go to FACCOC.info. And once you do that, you can go ahead and click virtual forum and it'll take you to our app. All our speakers, um, you could follow them. Neil's gonna be going up first, so he's gonna have all the buttons in burgundy. His presentation is right here on presentation one. You could ask him a question. He'll, he'll be answering those questions during the Q&A. And you could also contact him after if you wanna go ahead and connect with them. And that goes the same for Joanna, she's gonna be going over a lot of stuff. Her presentation is also here because we wanna be able to give you and share you the presentation slides. You could ask her questions as well and you could also connect with her. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and give the floor to Neil and go ahead and click on presentation one so we can start following. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me know if you guys can see this. Give me a thumbs up. All right, well, first and foremost, I just want to say this. I want to thank you guys out for, thank you guys for coming out today and joining us on uh, this important presentation. Uh, a disclaimer I have that I just want to let you know is State Farm is not paying me for this. The Chamber is not paying me for this. U.S. Bank is not paying me for this. We're not gaining anything monetarily, all right? We're really doing this, or why I'm doing this is because I'm a business owner as well. And a lot, of this, uh, a lot of the situations that are going on right now are actually happening to me and a lot of other people within our chamber. We felt that it was the right thing to do as a chamber to bring you guys some information and some resources so that you guys can do your own due diligence. Hopefully this brings awareness to you of uh, what programs are out there and how you could best help yourself and your family. So we're not gonna claim that we know it all and we're not gonna claim that we're gonna be the ultimate resource, but we are going to be a source, okay? So first and foremost, uh, this is a presentation that I did for our other organization, Pangasinan Brotherhood, and it's called Coping with COVID-19, Hope, Health, and Humanity. Okay, so I'm gonna cover some, I got, I'm gonna cover quite a bit over here. So things that relate to homeowners, things that relate to insurance, things that relate to business, and things that relate to you, you yourself. So getting on into this, I'm gonna go to the, first slide here in terms of helping homeowners as many of us actually do own a home. First thing to the left, a lot of us have a mortgage. If you do have a mortgage, I would actually invite you to call your mortgage servicer. Why is that? Okay, because possibly right now you could qualify for a possible forbearance. You need to check with your servicer. The servicer is the one who you guys write the check to or the person that you guys pay the bill to you could have up to a 90 day deferral on your payment, okay? That is key. Basically a forbearance will prevent you, all right, from going into a foreclosure as foreclosures start typically on day 120. So before you actually decide, all right, hey, listen, I don't wanna just make this payment because I can't afford to, call your servicer, see what program they have for you so that you can defer your payment possibly for up to 90 days. While you're doing, is doing this, if they are one of the 200 servicers and banks that have signed up to join in this effort here in California, there is not going to be a hit to your credit. You possibly can get your fees waived. And depending on your servicer, maybe you can get a modification on your loan. All right. Or maybe with some servicers, they're going to ask you to pay everything, uh, everything back on month four, basically kicking the can down the road. But this is why it's important that you know that you do have an option uh, as a homeowner who has a mortgage where you could possibly defer out that payment 90 days at a time, okay? Next, in terms of property tax, uh, we are the Filipino Chamber of Orange County, so I'll talk specifically about Orange County, although I looked into San Bernardino, looked into Riverside County, and also looked into Now, property taxes by law cannot be moved past the delinquency date of April 10th. So yes, do you have to pay your property tax? It is due 
by that day. Otherwise, you are considered delinquent. However, if you go to uh, Orange County's website, when it comes to property tax, you could actually fill out what's called a penalty cancellation request so they could potentially or possibly uh, help you out in regards to the late fees on your uh, property tax payments. And typically, if you're late on property tax, it's about a 10% hit, okay? So you just wanna let you know, you do have that resource as well, because guess when property taxes are due, guys, if you haven't made a payment and you're not impounded, they're due on Friday, okay? So when it comes to insurance in um, California, because agents are typically licensed where they live, uh, California Department of Insurance for all types of insurance here, you can defer your payments up to 60 days, okay? So here's what that means though, all right? So I'm gonna give you a live example, but you're gonna wanna check with your own insurance company because the way they defer something out could be different than the way State Farm, my company defers something out. So let me give you an example. Let's say here, you guys have a automatic payment you know, consisting of four policies, total bill being $100 for April 10th in a couple of days. Well, if you call me like today and say, hey, Neil, you know what? I want to defer my payments. I know the California says I can defer up to 60 days. Yes, that is true, Joanna. Uh, but at State Farm, I can defer your payments out 30 days at a time. So, Joanna, I can defer your April 10th payment through May 10th, okay? But Neil, what happens on May 10th? Do I have to pay you $200, the $100 for April and now the $100 for May? The way that State Farm does it is we will actually take that $100 payment in April and divide that by three. So $33.33 on top of the $100 for three months. So it's $133.33 for three months straight, okay? But that's how your insurance carrier may be handling it, but I just want to let you know, you should look into that with your carrier because there is a plan for you because some of us, including myself, have quite a bit of insurance, all right? Next, uh, let me go on to the next slide. This goes deeper into insurance. It's called insurance assurance. So we just cover this right now. There's a possible postponement for up to 60 days in California. Uh, you want to ask for repayment details once you're coming up on your 60 days, okay? And right now, there is like a popular article going on about um, a potential refund for your autos. And the reason why that is coming up is because a lot of us are at home, right? We're not driving. Okay, talk to your agent or talk to your carrier about this because the way it's done, and once again, I'll talk about my company, is every year, right? We, we get what's called your annual odometer reading. So if you're driving less within that 12 month period of measure, then we will actually lower your premiums for your renewal, right? So what some of these carriers are doing is they're actually doing an advance of premium back because people are not actually going into work now, okay? So State Farm's position on this is we are going to have a decision. In case you insure with me, you will have a decision by sometime next week on what we're gonna do, but typically that's how that works. Now, some of us do own businesses like myself, okay? Um, you might wanna file a claim, I'm not telling you to, but let's just say you have that inkling to file a claim, okay? Two things that a lot of um, business owners look at, let's just say you're a restaurant, they're gonna look at something called business interruption. However, business interruption is normally due to something like a utility breakdown, for an example, like your power goes out, your food, your food is spoiled, you can't operate because your power went out. That's business interruption. Normally, that is not, uh, to something like this won't be claimable under business interruption, COVID-19. The second thing is they might wanna claim under what's called loss of income. Well, loss of income, typically the normal exclusions are fungus, mold, and a virus. Now, a business owner might say, hey, well, listen, you know what? No one came into my restaurant and brought in um, the virus and got everybody sick. There was just this stay at home order, which really dropped my business. So, hey, great question, right? I'm just, what I'm here to do as an insurance agent 
And an insurance agent never approves a claim, but they can help you fight your claim if they see evidence to help you in that regard. But also as an agent, I'm not gonna tell you, you can't file a claim. By all means, you can file a claim. I'm just letting you know the two, the two uh, bullet points here that come up the most when it comes to insurance. And I'm kind of giving you normal insurance verbiage is a lot of those things aren't typically covered. And this is why the federal government is stepping up and stepping in to make sure that we can take care of our small business owners, okay? Because they'd have to help us insurance agents out if we had to pay every claim as well. And that's not happening. What would happen is you'd probably put some insurance companies out of business. All right, so anyways, uh, let me go here into business not as usual because it's definitely not a usual time for business. It's not the same as what, where we are, where we were before. Um, there's a couple programs that are out. Some of, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this. Some of you guys, this might be news to you, but some of this information I'm sure you're gonna be able to use. So one of the things that you can look at on the left side is the economic injury disaster loan. You can apply directly at sba.gov or if you want to, you go ahead and cut and paste this link and simply apply, okay? This is a loan um, over here, okay, that is not forgivable. And if you do decide to go through with the loan, it is 3.75% amortized over 30 years. The big thing in regards to the economic injury disaster loan is this. There's a $10,000 grant, okay, that you can take. So hypothetically, let's say you got approved for a $30,000 loan. Well, you might opt not to take you know, 20,000 and only take a $10,000 grant. Does that make sense? A grant over here, you do not have to pay back, all right? So you can apply on sba.gov. It's a short, like four page um, application. Um, once again, the loan is not required. There is $10 billion allocated, but if you do the math, right, and divide 10 billion by 10,000, that's gonna come out to a million uh, potential clients who can maybe go for the $10,000 grant. Well, what does that tell you in the United States? Well, words is about between, hold on, so sorry, hold on. Yeah. There's, there's between 32 to 33 million businesses in the United States. So if you don't get your, uh, your application in, well, I mean, the sooner the better. That's all I have to say to that. Now, who can apply for this? People like sole proprietors, businesses under five uh, under 500 employees, independent contractors, you know, certain nonprofits, and this. So this right here, the, uh, it's called the EIDL. You can apply directly at sba.gov. Okay. Now moving along to the Paycheck Protection Program, this is where you can apply at your business bank or, like for example, a U.S. bank. You know, you could apply with them. This loan over here is forgivable and it's, and the payback period on here is two years at 1%, okay? Now, forgivable meaning like if you use it for the proper expenses, let's say you're using it for your payroll, okay? Or for your lease or for your mortgage interest or utilities, right? Those are forgivable expenses. How do they figure out your loan here? Well, first off, if you've been in business, in all of 2019, you would actually take your payroll, okay, and you could probably find this on your 941 or you would seek assistance through your payroll provider, okay, but if you, but here's how they would normally do it, add January through December, all right, divide by 12, then multiply by 2.5. That there is the figure that they're gonna use in order to give you that loan. And as long as, once again, you use it for those uh, expenses such as payroll, primarily being 75%, okay, of the expenditures, the lease, the mortgage interest, the utilities, you can forgive that loan right then and there. The, now, when, um, when can you use this? Well, let's say you actually get approved next week, you know, like April 13th or whatever. You have eight weeks to spend that money, okay, on what sources? On the sources that we just talked about. How is the bank gonna track this? I don't know, you, get, you gotta talk to your bank. I could tell you how one bank is tracking it. Is they're looking at the relationship they have in your bank account to see where you're spending that money, okay? So that might be how they're doing it. And then who could apply for this? You know, 
sole props, partnerships, you know, LLCs, independent contractors, they can apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. And this is where people like Joanna from US Bank who later on will go into this a little bit more. Now there's some additional assistance over here. Let's just say you're an employer, right? Um, there's something called a sick leave credit. And how this works basically is you could actually have an employee because if they're diagnosed with, you know, with the coronavirus, or let's just say they're told by a medical uh, a doctor for them to stay home, or let's say they're, they're, they have symptoms and they need to stay home, then you, know, you have a, a credit for 10 days up to $511 per day on that employee. On that employee. Okay. There's also the family leave credit. So it's up to 50 days, all right, for $200 per day on a family member who needs to go watch or take care of that person who is suffering. Okay, does that make sense? So now, underneath that, okay, there's something called employee retention credits. That's up to $5,000 per employee. Now, how this relates to the Paycheck Protection Program is, you know what? If you're going to use employee retention credits, then you're, you're not going to use that for the Paycheck Protection Program. Okay, that's like you're going to use one or the other for, um, for your scenario. So let me give you an example. Let's say you employ one person. The magic number here is $24,000 a year or $2,000 a month. Okay, so why is that? Because 2,000, right, times 2.5 is 5,000 bucks. That's exactly a break even. So let's say you, were, you had an employee and you only pay them $1,000 a month, okay? What would you use? Well, you know what? You would use this, the employee retention credits. Well, why, why would you use this? Because guess what? It's up to a five. It's up to five thousand dollars as a credit to you, instead of right, instead of one thousand times two point five, which is two thousand five hundred. So hopefully you guys follow me there. Okay. So, anyways, let me move on because we've got a lot of material to cover. And right here, really, what I want you to do is just get familiar with some of this. You can find the resources on Google and on YouTube and a bunch of other places, which I'll show you later on, okay? So now there's additional information, and this is just for all of us everyday people. Number one, all right, you guys are aware that there is a $1,200 up to, up to a $1,200 stimulus check. If you guys don't know what you're getting, right, which a lot of people don't know what they're getting, and let's say you haven't filed your 2019 taxes, that is okay. You can actually copy this link right over here, Okay, to TurboTax, into it. It's not signing you up. It's just, you can actually literally calculate what you're gonna get. And let me see if I could share a screen with you right now on this. Uh, hang tight really quick. Let me see if I could share this screen. Well, you know what? No, it's okay. But anyways, cut and paste this right here. And here it's literally four simple clicks and it will tell you what you're gonna get back in terms of your stimulus check. Now, another big thing, okay? You might have some parents or some loved ones who are on social security, okay? Or who have some type of disability payments. The big news as of last week is guess what? they no longer have to file a tax return, okay, in order to get their check. That's huge. Another thing, okay, CARES Act and, and how it relates to unemployment. Well, in case you didn't know, which I'm sure a lot of you do know, unemployment is run by the state. In California, right, and I'll just talk about California, you know, we pay out up to 26 weeks in terms of unemployment, right, but with the new CARES Act, they're adding an additional 13 weeks for unemployment, which is huge. Unemployment now has also been expanded to include some other, uh, some other jobs that weren't able to get unemployment before. So what are they? People that are self-employed, okay, people who are independent contractors, 
gig workers, you know, so people who freelance, people who drive for Uber and Lyft, all right? They've even expanded this to potentially help uh, some of those who have partial unemployment, okay? Now, depending on the state, right, there's gonna be a state benefit cap. A lot of states go to like two thirds of the wage, but California's maximum unemployment per week is 450 bucks, right? The CARES Act unemployment is being run from the federal government, but here's what they're going to give you if you are on unemployment. An extra $600, okay, 600 bucks for 13 weeks. So technically, you might have something like $1,050, you know, for 13 weeks when you're normally getting $450, right? Normally, you would run out after 26 weeks. Now you can go up to 39 weeks in unemployment. So just letting you know that that could be available to you. Now, let me go back. Hold on, I don't know what happened there. Sorry guys. Okay. Yep, so if, you're, if you have people who are furloughed or people that you know are furloughed, okay, they could potentially partake in this unemployment, um, unemployment as well. So how do they sign up? You know what, unemployment, you always have to sign up at the state level. So just Google California, you know, unemployment, the vi on the very left side is gonna say how to file a claim. It's right then, it's right there. Okay, uh, some other big news. Okay, some people have to resort to pulling out early from a 401k or their retirement. That penalty, the 10% penalty, if you're under 59 and a half, has been waived because of COVID-19, okay? So, but of course, you know, you're going to want to, when you're calling up to uh, withdraw some money, you're going to want to talk to that person on the line and just verify that. The other thing that's happened here, like let's say you have workplace retirement, okay? The maximum before that you could pull out at any one time is 50,000. That's been now expanded to 100,000 because of what's going on. Now, healthcare coverage. For some, of, for some people who, who might not have healthcare coverage, guess what? They've actually uh, opened enrollment through June 30th, 2020. I myself had to take this for my wife. So thank God, you know, this was available to us. So thank you, Geraldine, shout out to you. Now, um, in terms of income tax, right? Because that's coming up. If you don't know this already, that's been pushed back, okay, to July 15th, 2020. All right. So there are a lot of things that we touched on over here. Once again, I'm not the know-all, be-all, do-all source, but hopefully you'll find something in this presentation here that resonates with you and can help potentially you or a loved one. But here's some additional resources. You can get uh, everything you need to know from like SBA.gov, from the Treasury, from the IRS, from the Franchise Tax Board, from the California EDD or the Unemployment Section, you can go to your bank, okay? Like if you want to apply for paycheck protection or you can go to your favorite chamber of commerce, which hopefully is us, right? So in any case, um, on behalf of FAC COC and myself and the rest of the board, we just want to thank you for tuning in today, giving us that opportunity to give back to you because you guys are what keeps us going as a chamber. And this is why we thought that's important for us to prevent, to present some information your way. Okay, so our ask basically is to be safe, stay healthy, keep connected, and may God bless us all. Okay, thank you guys. Jay, I'll, uh, Jay, I'll go ahead and give it back to you. Appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and share, that was great information again. Go ahead and click on presentation one if you wanna view Neil's presentation. I know some of you guys were asking on the chat. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask him. He will be going over this at the Q&A section. But for right now, I'd like to introduce Joanna Pamara from US Bank. Uh, go ahead and click on presentation two to view her presentation. Joanna, it's all yours. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Again, what Jay said, uh, I'm Joanna Pameran with US Bank. And thank you, FACCOC Board of Directors, for letting me speak to you guys. Like what Neil said, I am not the expert in regard to this. What I'm going to go over is the payment, the Paycheck Protection Program. And this is what I just know what US Bank is providing for us for my business client, and I wanted to share it with everybody as well. So I'm gonna go over the, there's five things that I wanna share with you guys. The five things to know about the CARE Act and how to apply for payment, sorry, Paycheck Protection Program, we call it PPP. So what is Paycheck Protection Program? Paycheck Protection Program is the Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Security Act there was a um, place in law in regards to uh, address the economic fallout in regards to the 2020 coronavirus pandemic here in the United States. In a nutshell, it's a, the payment protection, the paycheck protection, sorry, banker, <laughs> paycheck protection program is a $350 billion aid that the president signed a couple of weeks ago to aid and help the small businesses that's impacted by the cover the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm gonna go over again, the five things that you, what people wanna know in regards to Paycheck Protection Program. Um, and I know it's gonna be probably the same thing as what um, Neil had went over, but who qualifies for the Paycheck Protection Program? Well, small businesses with fewer than 500 employees, and it's including the nonprofit as well. So the entities that what Neil had mentioned, and I'm gonna mention it again, the entities that can apply for this or qualifies for this is the sole proprietor, S Corp, LLC, nonprofit, and he did mention the independent contractor, but for US Bank right now, we're not actually accepting any application from them as of yet. But great news is US Bank will expect to expand it by in, in the coming days, we're going to be opening it for all the eligible businesses. And a lot of the people um, asking as well is, who do you apply with and where do you take your application? With us, um, a lot of the loans right now that's being offered, a lot of uh, it's being offered with the, a bank, the who is SBA lender approved. Odds are, if you bank with the five major banks, which is your Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, Chase, and U.S. Bank, if you bank with them, we are SBA lender approved. Unfortunately, there's a couple of them that has a pushback because this came, by, came about so fast that they don't have their process in place. So just check with your, with your bank right now, like what Neil said and what I'm, you know, I'm telling you guys. I highly, highly recommend for all of you guys, especially for the qualified business, to contact your bank right away to make sure to potentially secure this loan. Because after all this craziness happens, we wanna make sure that you're still in business. We wanna make sure you take advantage of this, of this loan. And it, it, again, it's $350 billion. That's a lot of money, but there's a lot of small businesses that, um, that wants to take advantage of this. So don't wait, make sure that you're um, contacting your bank right away. And on this one, I'm not gonna go over it because Neil did a great job. What types of loan um, you can apply for? He did mention that 2.5 times the average monthly payroll up to $10 million. And it's so cool right now, it's a sole proprietor. I actually just got a message that they got approved for a million dollars. One of my dear client. So I'm really proud of that. It was just before I left my office, they got a million dollars for a sole proprietor. So that was amazing for me. I'm so proud of that. And for what, again, Neil said, this Paycheck Protection Plan actually have a loan forgiveness. And there's eligible, uh, it's, you, there's a lot of information in regards to this. So in a couple of slides, I'm going to have a link in regards to what's covered and what's not. And again, on this one, how to apply, contact your bank right away in regard to this, because we want to make sure that you have and still operating after this craziness, what's going on. My other slide is what we are doing for US Bank, and I, 
I added a couple of information. Oh, sorry. I added a couple information on here because this, these are the questions that a lot of my business clients and a lot of non-customers are asking. So uh, right now we have a dedicated, dedicated website that we are letting our customer um, go over, or I highly suggest for you guys as well to look at this. This program, because um, we've never expected this, it's something that's never happened before. So our website in this program actually changes minute by minute, hour per hour. When we had this initial conversation with Jay, Joseph, and Edwin, Ed, uh, Neil and I just said, you know what, we need to have this meeting right away. Because again, from my meeting with them yesterday, it changed again for this morning, and I'm getting like um, communication air, minute by minute that everything is like, changing. So again, go to www.usbank.com to provide you the latest information in regards to this um, program. And the other thing a lot of my customers are asking is, um, can my customer apply for a paycheck protection program? So when, they, when our customer, and this is something that I'm very proud of, U.S. Bank gave us the tools and time to actually contact a lot of our customers. So way before this is happening, even though it was just, um, they were talking about it in the, the president signed, we were contacting our customers. I have a list of customers that I was contacting. And then I know, I'm sorry, with like, you know, Jay, it was like a last minute and even Neil had to like contact me. So it's my bad. I'm sorry, you know, but I, you know, you guys are my, you know, my guys, but I, I should have been contacting you guys. So when Jay asked me in regard to this, I definitely said, you know what? Yes, we have to do this. And I have to talk about this. So again, with our process with U.S. Bank, and unfortunately right now, we're only um, helping our business clients. And it's something, you know what, I'm very proud of because you know what? U.S. Bank, that's how we, we handle our clients. We take care of them first. And I'm sorry, I should have been, you know, taking care of you guys. But if it changes, you guys will be the first one to know that, hey, we can help non-customers. I will give you all the information for what I'm getting. So, again, there's a designated um, website that you can utilize as well and, um, and inquire in regards to this one. And also, the next one is, the question a lot of people are asking in regard to this, should my customer fill out the U.S. Treasury application form or, and provide it to U.S. Bank? That is the SBA application that um, a lot of the businesses, actually, I had a line the other day from Wells Fargo and Citibank. They're saying, I have the application. Can you take this? Actually, no, you cannot take, you cannot pull up that application and think that's, that, that's the application because this is a different law. This is a different um, program. So you cannot apply. And then also for you guys, for your information, don't think that, okay, I'm going to apply at this bank. I'm going to apply at SBA because I want to get my money right away. Please, please, please don't do that because what's going to happen is um, it's all going to go through SBA. And if you're doing that and then on their system, it will say, okay, this is duplicate applica application you might end up going back to the bottom in regards to that. So please don't um, apply everywhere else thinking that, oh, I'm going to get this money. Please, no. No, 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 don't do that. And, um, and again, uh, Neil covered this, but I wanted to put this on here. My customer is asking additional details to other SBA programs. There are a lot of programs, and even like what Neil mentioned, and there's more information that I was reading today, in regards to the COVID-19 um, small business guide resources, I added this here, and this is will direct you uh, direct it to the SBA.gov, and it will have all the links to all the different programs that you guys can take advantage of. I guess I again I highly highly suggest for you guys to take advantage of this to make sure that you guys can get all the different loans that can um, that you guys can utilize and use as well. And what I'm going to show you guys, usually for the U.S. Bank, what, when we call our customers, we give them what we call a SBA um, PPP inquiry form. It's a basic information. You just need your email address, your contact information, what zip code, um, and the business name. And on this one, even though we're putting down, are you a U.S. Bank client or not, 
again, we're only right now, we're taking applications for our customers. But if it comes out, I will let Jay know right away. And um, this FACCLT have a great communication that um, we can blast it and you guys can contact me in regards to this. I would be gladly to help you in regards to this. And um, the next presentation, the next slide is actually what you would need. I have, um, I added it here, what you would need if you end up getting this application online. Oh yeah, go back, going back to our, to US Bank, we're making it seamless for our client. That's why, because we have most of their information already. So when they do apply, all their information is populated to our, um, to our, to our system already, so they don't have to double all the information. But that's why we are taking care of the business clients first, our existing customers. But for you yourself, there's a listing of different things that you would I, you would have you you would need when you're applying for this program. Again, for what Neil I think mentioned a couple of this, contact your accountant. Your accountant would know this. A lot of my business clients actually send it to their accountant and they're the one that filled out the information for them, which is perfectly fine. And the other questions in regard to this is like the 2019, a lot of them do extend their um, tax filing. So I would highly suggest again, contact your um, accountant or payroll provider. They would know all this information for you guys. And then the last thing is, here's my information. Like I said, I only talked about what we're doing for our customers, for US Bank customers. But if you guys are interested, there's my contact information, my email address. If you need or if you have any questions in regards to this, just you can email me to joanna.favispamera at usbank.com and please put down FACCOC Paycheck Protection Program and put your information on there. I will give you a call and I will send you as much link that I have in regards to this program. And if they say, okay, go live for non-customers, I will send it to Jay and he'll blast it to everybody. So that's all I have, Jay. Jay, that's all I have, okay. Thanks for the info, Joanna. Hey guys, You're if welcome. you can connect, her presentation is right here, a lot of information. Um, go ahead and ask her questions because we are going to be starting our Q&A pretty soon. And then all her contact info is right here. So you could go ahead and um, contact her via email. You could call her and there's also a link to her website. Um, there's so much information that Neil and Joanna shared that we're so blessed because I want to, I do want to, uh, introduce Natalia um, you know we, we it was a quick meeting that we had to put together but with all this information we could really use some help in all this and I could sure use some help so I wanted to introduce Natalia she's she's actually helped over 25 entrepreneurs small business owners um, actually prepare uh, for these programs so I'm gonna go ahead and give her the floor uh, because she is offering a free assistance consultation complimentary to all of us to any of us who needs help and that's so much, that's very, um, you know, we really appreciate that. So Natalia, go ahead. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Natalia Smith. I'm kind of a new member in this um, FACCOC, but um, I understand this is for everybody. Everybody who is in this, mess, we need as much help as we can. So this is my way of giving back. I'm an accountant and bookkeeper. I have my um, bookkeeping practice, Pixie Desk Accounting. And I help all of my clients, and I have been um, offering my service to be able to help you guys understand the numbers, what they're looking for, what um, revenue sales numbers, what cost of goods sold numbers that you're looking at. Of course, I'm an accountant. I'm 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 familiar with those numbers. So for you guys who who need some help and just kind of you know what what is this? I can offer you what my knowledge is. I'm part of a lot of accountant forums and I've been updated, you know, just like Joanna. We've, we've been updated with so many different changes that, oh, now you can apply. Oh no, you cannot apply this for now. This is changing. 
So I'm, I'm sure everybody, Neil, as well, we know the changes and the dynamic of this, this new program. Everybody want, needs to know, and I'm here to just offer my service and give you um, the information that I have. So um, contact me. I'll, I'll put my, my information on the chat, and feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks again, Natalia. Her info it could also be found on the application, so you, go, you could go ahead and contact her there. Uh, you could contact Natalia, just click that button and it'll take, take you directly to her. I want to go ahead and um, open this up for our Q&A. Um, you guys can utilize the uh, chat via Zoom uh, to ask your questions, or you could go ahead and use the app to ask. Uh, so I'm going to give the floor to our speakers. Um, so go ahead, answer any questions that the members have. Neil, I have a question, Joseph here. In regards to renters, is there any, uh, any break or any program for renters? Yeah, I'm glad you're actually asking me that. We have our, our real estate pro over here, Edwin Valloy, who can actually uh, give you the answer to uh, leases and rentals. So Edwin, go ahead. Can you guys hear me okay? Got it. Is my audio on? Yes. Okay, great. So unfortunately, uh, rentals are really complicated because the uh, uh, rentals are, it's a contract between the tenant and the landlord. And then historically, it's really tough for the government to get in there and give support because often the landlord has their own obligation, which is usually a mortgage. About two thirds of landlords are on the hook for a mortgage. So if you stop getting the income, they default on their mortgage. And then now you guys are in the same boat where if the, if the house gets foreclosed on, it takes down the whole ship. So right now, what they have is a moratorium. Uh, LA County was the first that came out with it uh, th that I know of. It was LA County, California, and then the U.S. as a whole. The moratorium just means that, that evictions are halted right now. It does not let you off the hook on the obligation to pay rent. So if you imagine if the moratorium goes on for 90 days, now you're, you have a growing balance of 90 days. So what I've been telling people is try to – Make an arrangement with your landlord if you can. Like I said, a lot of them do have that obligation of, of that mortgage payment, and then maybe you can soften that blow. And then make a, make, make a payment plan or something like that. Because we didn't really touch on what's, what's on the horizon as far as what, what mortgage relief is, is, in, uh, is in play. Because I do expect some TARP money about 30, uh, 90 days from now. And it could be like 2010 all over again. Thank you. Yeah, I want to go ahead and drop a golden nugget uh, to you guys, all right, as an insurance uh, agent. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm not saying or advocating deal with Neil, but this is a prize from me to you. All right, now for some of you car connoisseurs that are out there, so let, like, let's say you guys have more than one car, but you're all staying at home. One thing you could actually do to cut your bill, okay, is just suspend one of the coverages on the other cars you're not driving, all right? Suspend the coverage on it and put it as comprehensive only. So if that car is being, let's just say, parked in the garage or parked outside, right? You're not having to pay for the bodily injury, property damage, or anything like that because guess what? You're not using the car, all right? So just to give you an example of a client that I've done this for, maybe just before we came on here, they were paying about $400 every six months. I was able to suspend their, their coverages and only put on comprehensive. So comprehensive simply means that's a deductible, right? If anything happens to your car, like let's say uh, there's vandalism, there's weather damage that happens to your car, right? Or let's just say this, worst case scenario, it gets stolen. You have coverage on your car. Well, it reduced his actual bill to 10 bucks, all right? So, that's a little golden nugget for you guys in case you guys have an extra vehicle that's just sitting at home and you want to save some money on your insurance. Tell your insurance to send me a check, your insurance carrier to send me a check later on. All right. But anyway, uh, just uh, some things for you. And let me see if I could share that screen now, uh, Jay, if that's okay. Um, yeah, here it is right here. Hold on. Can you guys see the screen? Okay. So this is what I was talking about. Like if you wanted to figure out what your check's going to look like, right, on the stimulus, then sim you simply go to this hyperlink right here or what I had on my screen. Daddy. You could file either put yes or no, see how this moves around. 
If you haven't filed your tax returns yet for 2019, just put no. Okay, let's say you're married. <laughs> you're married. Uh, it, let's say your household makes like 145,000 and this is adjusted gross income guys. Okay, so your adjusted gross income is probably gonna be adjusted down. Okay, in most cases. So look for that line on your last tax return or call your accountant or CPA or bookkeeper, whoever it is. Um, and let's say you have three kids, right? See, see how this can calculate it out? Like let's, 22 kids is a lot, but let's just say you had five kids, right? This will calculate what your check is going to be right then and there for you. So you don't have to guess, all right? So anyways, I just wanna make sure that you guys actually have this tool um, in terms of the stimulus checks going out, uh, rumor has it they're going to come out as early as the 9th, maybe tomorrow, but realistically, I think a lot of them, if, if the IRS does have your uh, banking information online, you'll probably see those checks, they're saying like in about seven to 10 days time, okay? If not, and they don't have any of your banking information, that check could be delayed, you know, possibly five months or it could take that long. So just an FYI. And oh, by the way, and I'm not promoting TurboTax, I don't do my tax with them. But what I do know is that they have teamed up with the federal government where if you are to input your information here with them, they could send your information to the federal government, all right, to help you along with your stimulus check. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And can I share something about that as well? Go for it. Um, make sure because there's a lot of fraud when it comes to this right now watch out for your parents your grandparents in regard to this or even your personal information just make sure that you know a lot of people are going to different sites and things like that or somebody's giving them a call your parents your grandparents saying that oh we have the stimulus check for you give us your check checking account and um we'll give you the, all the information there's a lot of fraud in regard to this right now. So unfortunately, they're taking advantage of that. So please be careful and just let everybody know in your family, and your grandparents, parents. That's it. Joanna, there was a question earlier. Um, okay. It was from Arnell. Can the Paycheck Protection Loan be used on mortgage payments on home-based businesses, i.e. board and care? Yes. Yes and yes but there's more information in regards to that because if it's um being utilized so let's say like my husband he has like an office it's only the square footage of the office so there's a lot of you know it's what you put in your tax return in regards to that so it's not all of your uh, mortgage but it's partial so, so joanna if the <laughs> hey Joanna. Um, so if the mortgage is actually on the entire house, then the payment protection loan could be could used. Be, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I, and I'll talk to you about that after because I am a U.S. Bank customer. Um, go ahead, Bobby. Oh uh, yeah. Hello, Bobby from AMP Staffing Network. Um, some people know me as Lee. Uh, Bobby's my nickname. But anyway, I have a question. A question on insurance. G uh, GL general liability and professional liability insurance and workman's comp. Can we also do a, uh, you know, forbearance or type of uh, non-payment for a couple of months? Is that possible? Well, on all, all insurance right now, you can actually delay the payment for 60 days. Oh, That's really? Oh, California okay. rule, right? So, okay. yep. So, but you, but what you want to do, Bobby, just to make sure that you're up to date on how you're going to repay that, right, is you're gonna to wanna to call your servicer or your carrier, right? So um, anyways, just make sure you call them and that way you can figure out how your repayment plan is gonna go back, all right? But you're not gonna experience, like if you're late by a few days, you're not gonna experience them cutting off your, your insurance, just FYI. But don't call up claims, right? Yeah, but yeah, don't call, if you have an agent, work with your agent, um, if you're going to call, and this, this is just a general insurance thing, just FYI, so you guys don't have agents. If you guys, um, and this is just for you, right? Let's say you guys are calling on an inquiry on a home, and let's say, I'll give you a perfect example here. This has nothing to do with COVID, but it's something you could use every day. Let's say you potentially had like a leak in your home, okay? Like some people do, and you're calling their 800 number, and you're asking them, hey, listen, I have a leak. Should I file a claim? The moment you talk to somebody other than your agent, 
in that insurance company, they're going to count that as a claim. Now, you might not ever go through with it, but it's going to be a zero paid claim and it's going to count against you. All right. So just note that down. Second nugget. Good to know. Some of y'all need to switch now. I'm kidding. Good to know. <laughs> Definitely. Know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to use Edwin's muscle if I need, if I need help. All right, guys, we got about five minutes left. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions. He had one from Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, my question is this, actually. I mean, this is a ton of money, as, as we've expressed a couple times. Taxes are going to go up. So to the tax people, uh, Natalia, I believe, uh, you're a tax person? Uh, I'm a bookkeeper. I know enough about tax, but I don't have a tax return. Uh, so the question is, what advice do you have moving forward? Again, taxes are going to go up. We can't pay for this out of money we don't have anyway. So what do we do moving forward? Well, I, my honest question, I don't know. I mean, even like this with the loan programs and everything, they cannot even figure out the, the, the regulation. They keep changing. I, I really don't know what's going to happen. Um, print more money? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been... I haven't heard anything. I mean, um, right now, all our focus is how to get that $350 billion as fast as it can to the uh, business owners so that they can still um, open their, their door for business. That's pretty much all I know, what they're focusing on, get as money out as they can so that we can survive. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, I'm sorry I cannot answer your question, but I appreciate Oh, no, it's it's... No, you're, that's perfectly reasonable. My, I think as business owners, that is a concern moving forward. Yeah, I mean, that's I, a, lot of, a, it's a lot of money. Can I make a comment? This is Geraldine. Um, I think a lot of us are, are business owners, so we're already doing our part to you know, cut our own tax liabilities because we can uh, deduct a lot more as business owners. If you're still a W-2 worker, I would highly suggest having a plan B side business in order for you to cut your taxes. And then secondly, if for those of us, especially business owners, that we can, uh, we're trying to plan for our retirement, this is where you want to diversify your uh, retirement uh, dollars to uh, tax advantage programs uh, that's not taxable. So that would be permanent life insurance, uh, Roth 401k, stuff like that, because we are deferring the taxes to tax liabilities in the future. Taxes will double in 20 years guarantee pretty much. So we need to do what we can now to uh, put away for money for our retirement that it's not going to be taxed when we're older and in retirement and we have no tax deductions. And I think that's what uh, a lot of people are failing to realize is when we're older, we have less deductions because our houses will probably be paid off. We have no kids, we have no tax deductions unless you still have a business. So now's the, the time to actually start paying those taxes and then defer, uh, and then um, saving in the future for uh, non-taxable retirement. So that's Geraldine, my can I, can I chime in real quick, Geraldine? Yeah. Okay, because you did mention something and it's my third nugget and then I'll shut up, all right? but. There's, there's one other outlet for you guys, if you guys do, because you did mention a permanent policy, okay? So for some of you guys who have a permanent life policy, let's just use, for example, a whole life policy. In there, you could have accumulated something called like dividends, which you could actually pull out and not get taxed on, by the way. I've had to execute this for a client of mine the other day who signed up uh, with a policy from me three years ago. Believe it or not, he works at Disneyland and what's going on with Disneyland today, guys? What do you know about Disneyland? Not only are they closed, right? For some of the workers are not even getting paid anymore. So what did he have to do? Luckily, he opened that life insurance policy up with me. He was able to get $10,000 out, right? That he does not have to pay back anything on because he can tap that resource. So for some of you guys who have a permanent life policy, right? You might actually have that as a resource in case none of this here that we talked about today will apply to you, right? You might have that and not even know it. So just uh, just something to keep it, look, a lookout and for. Frankly, you might want to use that cash value in your life insurance rather than taking out from your 401k first. So 
the 401k, even though it, the penalty is waived, it's still taxable. Whatever money you're going to pull out will be taxed. So you might want to use the cash value of insurance first. Right. Thank you. All right, everybody. It's, it is five o'clock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off. Appreciate all the speakers. Thank you so much. Let's continue to stay connected. Um, Joseph, Joseph, do you want to go ahead and closing? Yes, thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you to our speakers, Joanna, Neil. Thank you for all the uh, information that you shared with all of us today. And uh, as the Chamber, FACCOC, we're looking forward. I know times are really tough right now. I can feel it. I see it. I have to find a way myself out there to do business, but at the same time, be sensitive. So what we're going to do, we have some things lined up with the Chamber coming this month. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, we're going to continue our power networking lunch via virtual on the 30th. And then we have one in May. Then we're going to have some workshop in betweens. Once again, to pass on all of this very important information to business owners just like you. But thank you again very much for uh, participating. I'm looking forward to more. Take care. Peace to everyone. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, guys. Yes.